Welcome back to Let's Play Ghost of a Tale. I'm Burning Dog Face. And uh, we're back here in the sewers where Tylo needs to recover a sample of spider venom for our new BFF, Faustus Rot. I'm gonna level with you guys. I just spent a while scouring the sewers and finally looked it up, and I'm. Not sorry that I did. I'll just take that off and let my stamina regrow because... Ah, oh, asses. Ah, here we are. Apparently it's in this hole in the wall next to that banner I burned. Cobweb wall. You need the candlestick for that. Fair. Eat shit. I still can't see anything. Oh, oh, okay. That's a very big spider. Oh, no. Face the goddamn thing, would you? Dead spider. Uh. I don't like that at all. It's really fucking big. That's about the right size of a tarantula compared to a uh, a mouse, isn't it? Oh, look, a skull. Perfect. Wolf spiders, they call them, because they, uh, they don't make webs, they just hunt and eat. Just jump on you and drink your juices. Okay. Back out. No, it was, uh, I was, I, I was by that entrance, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go up here, and then I turn right, and I didn't get that because it just looked like a cliff. Fucking. Yes. It's left, actually. I found it in the end. I'm over here now. In fact, double save. Ah, stretch. Where is that guy? A file filled with the venom of a spider. The thick, milky venom coats the glass walls of the file. Here you are. And 
then I head over here. Man, I want to burn that. I want to burn it so bad. Grab some oil. Now I could bypass this, but it's not actually what I want. So I'll just hug the wall, head up here, and go into the barrel room. I guess this is must be the barrel room out here. This is just the door in the barrel room that needed the barrel room key. God damn it. I can't seem to reliably close the door unless I'm on the side the door is on. I like that his whiskers come through. While well, I can still run. Hey, Doc. Here, I found a sample of venom. Okay. Maybe. Not really. I don't know that one. Oh, in terms of simpleton, I mean a simple mouse might understand. Mushrooms. Nice. Ooh, wow. Oh. A smaller group is nocturnal. Blooming only between the hours of 7 and 6, so make sure you take a lantern with you. Is that a key? No, it was just a reflection. But I did miss some grain last time, so that's nice. Okay, one last spin around to find anything. Don't need that. Oh, of course he's got the distillery key. What is this stool for? It itches at me. I wanted to make a good impression on it. What? That guy's probably got a, a wicked headache. I mean, I dropped a giant barrel on him and it hit him so hard it broke. Let's not do that here. On mushrooms, a monograph by Faustus Rot. On mushrooms, a monograph by the, uh, by the renowned apothecarist Faustus Rot. A number of blank pages suggest the work is incomplete. Common fungus. Ear cap. A broad green cap and orange stem distinguish this handsome mushroom. The ear cap flourishes on... Oh my god, am I really going to have to remember all this in order to find these? So be it! The ear cap flourishes on dead and rotting wood, the trunks of fallen trees, their stumps, and so on. Used in treatments for fog eye, stomach murmurs, doubt. Cat's tooth. A rare mushroom, yellow in color and fluted in design. It's colloquially named is, is derived from this distinctive shape. The cat's tooth may be found growing on or near rough-hewn stonework walls, archways, etc. What are the hyphens floating above the words? I don't understand that. 
Used in treatments for droop ear and toothache. Sponge ball. Amateur mycologists might initially have some difficulty identifying the specimen. It's neat, it's red cap accented in white does nothing to evoke the imagery of its name. In fact, the sponge ball's name <clears throat> is derived from the large white spore as it releases towards the summer's end. Spongeball abounds around old cut stone steps, flagstones, and the like, used in treatments for saltar poisoning. I've just realized that the country that gets all the salt is called saltar, and it's not very creative. Uh, Weeping Widow. The purple cap should serve as a warning to all that this highly toxic mushroom should not be consumed. Yet it holds some mysterious allure for drunken bucks. Perhaps taking a shortcut home from the local inn through this glade or that dale. This specimen has truly earned its name. The Weeping Widow blooms beneath bee nests where natural sugars from the honeycomb infuse the ground. Used in treatments floor, marital bliss. Pus in boots. Gross. Loggerhead. This specimen has a curious effect upon any who consume its flesh. The victim will quickly become argumentative and belligerent, attempting to fight any creature that might try and come to their aid. The loggerhead thrives all along cliff edges. Used in treatments for cowardice and... Croup? Graup? No, it's another C. Croup. Doggerel. An unremarkable mushroom at first glance, a doggerel nonetheless, but nevertheless possesses many properties of interest to the apothecarist. The doggerel endures in places never touched by the sun. Used in treatments for a roving eye, a fickle heart, typhus. <laughs> Milky cap. The flesh of the specimen is extremely poisonous, but when pressed and filtered, it produces a tasty fluid often used in the production of various cheeses. The milky cap grows uh, predominantly around graves, used in treatments for pawpox and valian fever. Noggin Top. The Noggin Top, with its texture reminiscent of a rodent's brain, is perhaps the most alluring of all mushrooms. These mushrooms grow in abundance in the ground surrounding tree stumps, used in treatments for shyness and moor sickness. Chapter 2. Nocturnal Fungus. Moonlight's Veld. A small white mushroom with a tall cap, Moonlight's Veld, is one of four species native to the region that bloom only at night. This fungus, the Moonlight's Veld, is commonly found growing beneath oak trees. Used in treatments for ringtail and melancholy. On Mushrooms. Midnight Brood... Oh, I don't know why I read the top part again. Midnight Brood. This specimen blooms only at night. Its dark cap and stem make the Midnight Brood especially challenging to collect. The Midnight Brood favors the acidic soils found under and around thorn bushes, used in treatments for lung rattle and tattletail. Night Rush. As its name suggests, the Night Rush only balloons during the hours of darkness. The Night Rush grows exclusively around the trunks of fallen trees, used in treatments for frog breath, dizziness, and recurring dreams. And finally, Moon Crest. These Moon Crest and Night Rush share a genus and superficially appear to be much alike. However, the Mooncrest is far rarer and greatly desired for its healing properties. The Mooncrest prefers the warmth of fires, braziers, torches, and so forth. Used in treatments for envy, insomnia, and loose tongue. Hmm. should not have sank down in my chair like that, Ugh, because uh, at that angle I couldn't see anything. Oh, look at that, he's alerted to me, but I'm on a ladder, so I'm untouchable. Oh, that one's missing half of itself. I had best not fall. I fell. 
What? He doesn't seem to quite know what to make of that. Well, that's how he's doing that. He's bending his feet back at the knees. Even though his knees are in the back. No. God damn it. I know I can make the jump to this platform here and the... How else am I supposed to do that? Am I supposed to find, like, a fucking... burning, uh... What are they called? Flame arrows? I am on fire! God damn it, that was not supposed to be what caught on fire. Ooh. No, just a stick. Not a nocturnal mushroom. Oh, uh, no! Okay... Fuck the man. I earned that, you guys. You'd best believe. No skills, though. I wonder what that's about. Maybe I can get taught to pick locks or something. Well, no, then, I would, then all the keys would be redundant. Huh. Oh. No, that's it, empty. My bad. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. You want three hours? I'll give you to dawn. You're facing the wrong way. Maybe I should go back and, uh... Steal from everyone's friend, after all. Get some stuff from Silas's office. It's because I want to make a good impression, if I hadn't mentioned that before. Oh wow, 53 florins. Banty Venon is ready, now take this. The Apothecarist hands you a flask of antivenin. Carry it with you and use it sparingly. It could save your life. Right, and I need to find the last piece of armor. Where am I going to find those boots? Where, 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 where? Maybe in the armory, if I could get the armory key? Such insolence! This quest is a right of... Uh, a sacred rite of passage all apprentices must endure. Of course, forgive me. I always enjoyed simulating. Tum to tum. Oh no, I have to hit it, back, hit it again, that's right. I like that it moves slowly at first, to give you a chance to get on, and then accelerates a little bit. I'm really enjoying the lore in this game.
the, the bear end not having a tail and all that. Oh, there's a, uh, there's the timer. Okay, save, then I can probably afford to ask about the armor. Awesome. I think that is the thing, though. You know what? I might as well... That's not it. Uh, I'm going to check. Ah. Uh, no. I think it is the, uh, the one down there. It's the armory. So I need to find the armory key. Boop. Ooh, so many banners I could be burning. I don't even know where I am. Oh good, it's the cannon. And he's redetected me. Don't need that. Pardon me! Uh, oh, son of a... Nobody ever questions the blacksmith about why I keep disappearing in this region. Well, that'll do it for this uh, episode and this session. Ugh, stretch! I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Ghost of a Tale. When we go looking for that armory key. Nice to have an actual objective for a change. Later.